This week, we're reading A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel L. Jensen, otherwise known as Where Did the Fucking Horse Come From? Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine Season 2, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines of any genre. (laughs) Because that's what we do now. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. We should start by me apologizing to you. (laughs) I should have known better. Well, I wanted to try this author. So we are talking about A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel Jensen. And she was previously known for her Bridge Kingdom series, which I think got a lot of attention. You've talked about it. Yeah. It has a lot of like good attention on book talk. And I've read the whole series, but I was mad the whole time. And this one is worse. And I was like actively angry the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> which I, so I did try the sample of, of the Bridge Kingdom, the first book. And I got to page two where they make a reference to combat boots in a medieval desert setting. And I'm like, nope, this is not the book for me. <laughs> and I immediately put it down. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and then, so, well, we saw, we both saw this book come out like around the same time. Mm-hmm. And we're like, this is. It looks shiny and new and like it actually had an editor and a good publisher. So maybe. Yeah, because isn't it published by like Del Del Rey? Rey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that's a good indicator of like, oh, someone else had eyes on this. So it can't be complete trash. I got bamboozled by the cover. I was like, oh, it's so pretty. And I loved playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Really fun game. Like, if you're into the Norse mythology at all, like, this cover would speak to you. This synopsis of this story would speak to you. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why you wouldn't pick up this book and try and read it. Yeah, because we were just talking about that. Like, it has the characteristics of a good, great story, Mm -hmm. like another Akatar. But, like, the things it does wrong are just so heinous that you're like, are you fucking kidding yes. me? <laughs> okay, and like readers, just so you know how this worked out, we were both on the fence. We're like, we don't know what to read next. All right. We talked about this book. We each downloaded the sample and we agreed we'll get through the sample and then we'll make a decision. We did. And we're like, okay, sample's good. This is promising. I really liked that our heroine is married. Mm-hmm. Like she starts off married. And like, how often do you read that in romanticy? Never. So we're like, okay, it's a good start. Mm -hmm. And he had like interesting kind of spunky, but like reasonable, Mm -hmm. you know, just wants to do something way cooler with her life than be a housewife, like fucking all about it. Like, great. (laughs) But she's doing what's best for her family. Okay, relatable. Awesome. So this is Freya. (laughs) <laughs> this is how we okay we we are going to mutilate all the names in this book and that's fine i have no guilt over it because no, none zero percent so we open and freya is on a beach gutting fish and her husband is like he immediately appears and he's an asshole yeah. he's like you're gutting the fish the wrong way like this is how you do it you, you stupid woman <laughs> 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 yeah that's like almost verbatim <laughs> yeah um and it, apparently her husband is like a water demi god gifted from the gods like the magic system is cool in mm-hmm. this book yeah. i will give it that because it's like there's certain people in the population who have a drop of god blood and that gives them some kind of like special power yeah it's kind of like heroes in ancient greek mm-hmm. where they're like blessed yeah yeah and his is the power of a fish. <laughs> yeah. So he can summon fish out of the water. Mm-hmm. And this really cruel thing is like, I hated this. So she's getting a pile of fish and he's like, well, mm, you need some more work to do. And he summons all the fish that hop out of the water onto the, and beach themselves. And he, after being snarky and an asshole to her, he kind of walks away and she immediately tries to like rescue all the fish and throw them back into the river. Because mm-hmm. he pulled way too many than they could possibly sell. And it's mm-hmm. like, Oh, so you're a sociopath. Got it, got it, got it. Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) And she was married to him. Like, her family married her to him because he's, like, the most powerful man in the village. And, like, he's going to look out for her family. And she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's that's what she's got going for her. Freya is, like, this platinum blonde Viking beauty. (laughs) (laughs) I think she's, like, tall, too, and, like, curvy. (laughs) 
She's got everything going for her except a brain. But... <laughs> if I only had a brain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girl. <laughs> yeah, no, never appears in this book. And uh, so husband leaves. She's rescuing the fish. And then she's throwing a fish like over her shoulder into the water. And she, she hears like a sound behind her. <laughs> I kind of love this part. I did love this part. <laughs> and she turns around. And who is it? Hot himbo. <laughs> oh, man. If you got a thing for like the Viking look, like if you watch the show Vikings where yep. they have like the mohawk shaved. ponytail yep. but shaved on the sides like tattoos rippling muscles, muscles. yep this is for you this is bjorn <laughs> yeah i think he's literally described as that like That's tattoos it. shaved head but long ponytail maybe has a beard but maybe is shaven and is you know hot with not a lot going on upstairs no nope. and he basically immediately is like flirting with her and he's like hey watch where you're throwing these fish and he's like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. They have this weird supposedly like insta attraction thing uh. and she's like resistant to it. And it's supposed to be playful witty banter. Mm -hmm. But apparently this author can't write wit at all. Uh, so it just comes across as kind of flat. Yeah. Yeah. Did not like that. Nope. When you're reading it in the sample, you're like, OK, OK, OK. I get it. Like he might be like a side character. Like it's it's a little bit early it to was introduce way your <laughs> too early. male love interest. Like, OK, so maybe this is just like. Some guy. Cool, cool, cool. No, it's not some guy. It is the main himbo, and he's there the whole time, and this Insta attraction does not go away. It gets worse. <laughs> it's so bad when you introduce, like, the like the love interest too early. Because, mm -hmm. one, they're almost always recognizable as a love interest, even if they don't appear to be one for the first, you know, 20, 30 percent of the book. Mm -hmm. But, no, like, page two, this guy appears, and you're like, all right, well, I guess that mystery is solved. Yeah. Uh, Because... As you say that, I realize that the pacing of this book was all kinds of fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like if I had one big, big beef, like foundation wise, the pacing is a hot mess. <laughs> pacing is terrible and there's too much going on. Yeah. There's way too much action. Do a few scenes of action very well, but not 20 different gory scenes just haphazardly thrown together one hundo evidence a like okay she meets bjorn all right love interest introduced we meet evil ex husband all right oh now we get to meet the jarl jarl <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what to call it jarl, jarl. <laughs> but i mean honestly because his name is like snorri, snorri? <laughs> does not get better for this man. Dude, I forgot about the names. Snorri is... I, I feel like... um You've seen Sesame Street. Yeah. The yeah. Snuffleupagus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's what you would name, like, a, a gigantic Muppet elephant is yep. Snorri. Yep. <sighs> and so I will say, like, one of the redeeming things is Snorri's character is so, like fiendishly devoted to this like idea prophecy that he's like created. I feel like that was done pretty well because that's like his thing is he heard this prophecy when he was like younger from someone and he, you know, there's going to be the shield maiden that is her name is born in fire, some shit, some shit prophecy. And whoever controls her fate is going to rule the world, et cetera. And he's like, that's going to be me. But he like believes it. And yeah. He like does some crazy shit to like further that along. Mm -hmm. Like I did appreciate that he was batshit crazy the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's some of the characters are well designed. So after we meet Bjorn, Freya, like, returns to her village. But as she's on the way, like, Bjorn, like, rides off into the sunset, like, and, okay, I don't know, this is just a minor complaint, but she describes him getting on a horse and riding away. And I had to backtrack three pages and reread and reread until I could find the th one line that says that he has a horse with him. Okay, yeah, because I was... How did... Where did the fucking horse come from? <laughs> like, know. it is introduced. I found it eventually, but, like... Like weird shit like that, like afterthought stuff, like the, some of the way the scenes are described in the setup is like not enough is done on certain levels. Yeah. It's, it's like one of those that behind the scenes, he had to be like sprinting his fucking heart out to be in this next scene. Like the timing does not, not make sense. No. <laughs> so she's walking home by herself and then she has a battle with the trees. <laughs> Think she like trips, which I hate that is a trope. The like, uh, 
oh, like I trip over things. Oh, wait, she didn't even trip. She's like actually fighting the no, trees. No, that's what I mean. She's <laughs> no. fighting trees. So to think about. <laughs> she has like a practice. She finds a stick and she's going to pretend to be a warrior because that's Freya's stick. Is she's like, I want to be a, <laughs> I want to be a battle maiden and like defend my people. And so I'm going to practice sword fighting with a stick and beating against trees so yeah. she's running down like a forest path like drumming along the tree trunks <laughs> yeah and apparently she gets like sweaty while she's doing it so she's going full send it's like, like larping she's doing larping by herself <laughs> in the <laughs> trees <laughs> and it's like she comes out of this and she comes across like this gathering of barbarian men on horseback <laughs> yeah. and there's bjorn in the background and there's like a similarly rippling muscle viking men and then there's the Jarl? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Jarl. <laughs> I um, like Jarl, though. It's cute. <laughs> um, they definitely read it as Jarl the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, he's standing there and her evil ex-husband is there as well. Mm-hmm. And she's like, this isn't good. No. Oh, no. And that, that, that's it. He's like, you're a horrible fucking wife. I'm going to sell you out. Because I saw you using your power that you told everyone that you didn't have. And uh, he's been looking for you your whole life. And you're a skanky bitch because you've been, like, you know, uh, hiding this. And you're the one that can save us. And fuck you. Uh, we're divorced now. But the setup, <laughs> that doesn't even, like, get established right away. No. The Jarl orders Bjorn to kill her for no reason. <laughs> no. Like, he's just... Oh, here's this woman. Uh, this dude wants a divorce from her. Kill her, please. And that's it. Th yep. There's no explanation yep. until Bjorn almost kills her, mm -hmm. uh, but doesn't because her magical, like, God-given power manifests itself and, like, blows him back. <laughs> Can I talk about how triggered I am that we have this, like, trope now in fantasy where the women will, like, light up with starlight? Oh, no. I hate this so much. Because you can probably see where this is going. But later, obviously, of course, they're having sex in some cave somewhere and her body lights up with starlight. It's the cringiest, like... Why? Ugh. Yeah, so her, her shield lights up with starlight and it bounces him backwards. Um, and... <laughs> it's so bad. And then her husband's like, see, I told you, everyone. She has, has god blood. She is the shield maiden. We learn about the prophecy. The shield maiden will protect the Jarl. Jarl, what the fuck ever Snorri's name is. And then Snorri's like, all right, uh, you're divorced. You're coming with me. And uh, that's we're it. We're going to get married. Mm -hmm. like yeah, oh, <laughs> we're going to get married. And then, oh, then her evil ex-husband is like a like final like haha i'm going to go marry your friend and <laughs> i'm going to marry your best friend and oh that's the woman that your brother who is also a warrior in the jarl's band of warriors wants to marry and this is the trigger for freya <laughs> to grab the flaming axe from the heavens that bjorn carries and hurls it at her husband and immediately kills him mhm mm that's it. What the fuck, man? <laughs> it. I think what made me mad, too, is like totally speaking, not jokingly, uh, we have a moment where her hand is like completely blistered, almost useless. They're worried they're going to have to cut it off. And you get a moment that this could potentially be some kind of cool like disability rep where she has to like overcome that but then they immediately fix her with magic and it's just ugly looking and that's what she has to is overcome. the fact that she's a beautiful woman with an ugly hand yeah it's like we have the moment where she would have to like switch dominant hands and like that's a pretty egregious thing to have to like adapt to and instead you're gonna pick this like superficial like, oh i have to wear gloves because it's not pretty <laughs> my hand is ugly <laughs> it's like hands aren't nice to begin with yeah. like, <laughs> So we kind of skipped over the fact that Bjorn has also got god blood in him, mm -hmm. and his god blood is like the god of uh, thunder, uh, fire, F something. War? So much so that he carries an axe that is a flaming axe made of fire, and he's the only one who can wield it. <laughs> only, <laughs> sorry, I can't even. <laughs> okay, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so she kills her ex-husband. Her brother is like threatened to be like, oh, you hid her secret these many years. Like, I'm going to break your legs and stay in this village. Yeah. 
basically. Dumb. <laughs> and so she, oh no, the one horse plot. Uh, <laughs> I forgot this happened. So, so Frankia, uh, because she's got this mutilated, <laughs> poor, ugly hand, has to like ride double on a horse with Bjorn back to the castle, keep whatever. So romantic. Um, and of course, she's like riding in the front and he makes some kind of like ribald joke about like not being able to use his penis so anymore. He's so horny all I the time. Know. Like it's just, it's enough. Like we don't, don't need that. Like there is nothing to him besides sex and killing. Yep. Yep. Oh, literally. I have a fire axe. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you what I can really do with it. <laughs> <laughs> my soul is leaving my body. Because... <laughs> It wouldn't be that, like, outrageous if she also, every single time, is, like, having impure thoughts about him. But, like, <laughs> impure mad thoughts. about... <laughs> what century are you from, Katie? <laughs> this book is killing me. <laughs> but, I mean, she's like, I can't be attracted to him because I'm being married to his dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole other level. Okay. So, yes, she has to get married to Snorri. Are you recovered? I don't think so. I think I'm being like literally murdered by this. Oh book. my god! Okay, that whole okay dumb plot point. Yeah, because that doesn't make sense, frankly, in a society that also has slaves. No, because they have thralls, mm -hmm. which are basically slaves. So, like, why do you have to marry this woman to control her? Is Snorri's like single minded, like? Oh, whoever controls her fate. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, That has to be her husband, right? Nobody was going to fact check him with some kind of like... And he's also married already? Yeah! Like, yeah. <laughs> like nobody put more than two seconds of thought into something that like this prophecy has been around for like 10 years, like minimum. And that's the best you can come yeah, up with. we're going to get married. So uh, they get back to the village and she starts her, what? Her hand gets healed. And can we also talk about the fact that there are beautiful women everywhere? Ugh. All of them. All of the secondary female characters are just this, these gorgeous, curvy. And I find it irritating because they're all not warriors. Mm -hmm. And the warriors are not described as beautiful because we get like another female who's like, you know, older and husky and et cetera. And she's the one that fights. But all of the like secondary women that like are not really doing anything are all like beautiful and like busty and voluptuous. And like that's all that Freya like thinks about when she's talking. Like, how is this book written by a woman? But like Freya is a woman and it seems like everything is from the male gaze. Like, uh, my brain is not processing. No, not at all. <laughs> and then, like, they, they get her ready for her wedding to the story. And, like, again, I maybe this is just a device, a trope I don't particularly like in, like, recent fantasy books is describing makeup and clothing in detail. Like, they put coal on her. I could give less of a fuck. Like, <laughs> this is, to me, this is like, oh, you want Hulu to pick up your, like, TV adaption. <laughs> So they know what to use in costume and makeup. Like, <laughs> so horribly cringy. Yeah. So she goes to her wedding. She gets married. And did you ever see Midsummer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was kind of getting like vibes of that, but less good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is not a good book. Yeah. But after her wedding ceremony, they do this blood reveal. Thing. I think that might be after they make the deal. Oh, after the like reception and yeah, because like everyone's like, oh, it's time for you to like bed your new wife, and it's very uncomfortable because this man is already married and like her dad's age. So they go off into a room with, with the wife, with the wife, with the current <laughs> wife, <laughs> and she's like, I don't think I can watch you sleep with someone else again. And you're like, again. Uh, and so they like make this kind of like haphazard deal that he won't ever have sex with her, but she can't ever betray his blood or something. Like, okay. So again, if you need foreshadowing with a fucking Sharpie, yeah, this 
like blood oath that she takes because the first wife is a witch Mm -hmm. and so she makes freya swear like be loyal to only the man of this blood oh i wonder what other men would have this blood except you on the sun Hmm, shocker the one you're insta attracted Uh, to god weird (laughs) and then freya is supposed to have this moment of brilliant which brilliance which is just like a obviously moment uh she's like okay so we'll pretend to be married and i won't give it away and you can just bang your wife and then she immediately get goes into like a little hole in the and then escapes yep, yep because that makes sense to preserve the appearance of having like sleeping with your new husband yeah. she goes yeah! wander- <laughs> she goes wandering around the village looking for the seer randomly because she wants more details about the prophecy. So instead of like sitting in her little corner while the two fuck. Uh, she... <laughs> I'm sorry. This made me I... so angry. She was no, so 100%. dumb. Yeah. No. It's it's valid. Mm. <laughs> 100%. Like you can't have this brilliant idea to have a pretend marriage and then like immediately do something that would make everyone suspicious. Yeah. Because it. I find it insulting when authors kind of do that where they make the character do something just so outrageously stupid like does no one have a brain in this book or like do you think i'm stupid and like i don't recognize (laughs) it was entirely so freya could run into bjorn again yep basically and he's like what are you doing i'm drunk and obviously upset that you're marrying my father like weird weird (laughs) as a plot um but anyways And then, you know, oh, no, someone is attacking while everyone is drunk. We have to warn them or do something to stop them. Uh, And they, like, light some boats on fire. Yeah. Like, so this so what happens, this battle scene that happens happens like on repeat throughout the next 30 percent of the book. Yep. Which is the little town is attacked because they found out the shield maiden was discovered and is married to Snorri. So a rival tribe comes in and attacks and freya has another moment of brilliance and like oh look they're ambushing from the rear i have to tell someone (laughs) so she climbs to the roof jumps across to another roof falls into a pile of pig shit and then runs into bjorn again yeah i didn't understand like the requirement for her to be dirty and smelly when she like re-met him like and then for him to still be attracted to yeah, her was like weird. you don't have to prove that to me sweetheart like <laughs> i get it they're insta attracted to each other regardless of who smells like what because <laughs> uh, oh, why like I why it was the stupidest waste of three pages that she fell into pig shit and then she's can't get up and she's just getting it everywhere and uh she's meanwhile like, people are being murdered <laughs> I know. and villages getting set up a fire and so they take this moment to have like bonding over whatever i don't know because they make some kind of joke about her not being able to swim good and it's like <sighs> now does not seem like the it's time ridiculous <laughs> have you seen like that quote it's going around on book talk from the third court of thorns and roses at the end where like he likes he roars his pleasure it's the sound <laughs> of like he people's roars his pleasure last dying breath it's when they're fucking like right after the big battle and it's like people are people are dying yeah. like, maybe like not do that right now that's this book in yeah. like a, a one phrase <laughs> it's like the author has decided i write romanticy and that means there must be sex dripping or like the Ew. implication <laughs> of sex dripping. Oh, yeah. i did not finish that statement <laughs> Was cut off. I was I'm like, sorry. okay, she's gonna go somewhere, and then you didn't. Um, <laughs> Woo. Let me think before I open my mouth. Uh, I don't. So uh, it's like, let's make this as much action as possible, as much violence and gore, but also there has to be like the implication of sex happening At all times, all the time. Yeah, and that is not romanticy. Um, I'd like to return to the holy Bible of romanticy, Crown Duel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but for reals, though, because it's not insta anything. Nope. Uh, They build a reasonable respect for each other over, you know, a bunch of misunderstandings. Um, You have battle scenes, but they're done reasonably and with, you know, purpose, (laughs) not just people dying for no fucking reason. Yeah. (laughs) Where? Why did you do this? There's nothing happening here. Uh, Did you ever see that movie? I think it's called like The Last Norseman. Oh, I think it's called Just the Norseman. 
or oh, nor- the, or the Northman. The Northman. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it. Is. Uh, this is that movie, but like less creepy and cool. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And even that movie was like not great. No, but it was pretty. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you want Anna Taylor Joy and who's the dude? Alexander Skarsgård. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful humans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll just watch them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is like what that book was trying to be, but like a lot less reasonably, acceptably. Like, oh, yeah, I'm OK. I get it. Like, you know, hard life. Cool. Got it. Uh, This is just like book talk trash fanfic of the Northmen. Oh, hot take. But yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I love fanfic. So for me to talk mm. some heavy trash about uh, fanfic, this is like the not well written one. There's just so they the raiders are attacking. They go into the ocean. Freya's brilliant idea to burn the ships to distract them into running away works. And then they return to Snorri and Snorri's like, all right, we need to go to like the holy mountain or something so you can make your pilgrimage and be blessed of s- it's a blur. They have their like blood pack thing that you were talking about. Oh, earlier. okay. So this their, like, was blood weirdness. This was cool, and I think there's aspects like that are there's tiny little glimmers of coolness sprinkled throughout this book. Mm-hmm. And so after the raiders are defeated, the original first wife, the witch, she performs this ritual on Freya, which is basically a they cut her open or something to like reveal her blood magic, and then the gods are supposed to like create a tattoo on her that shows that she's the daughter of whatever god Mm -hmm. so she does this and what how it's described it looks like the scene from like we were mentioning before midsummer where the dude's chest is split open oh i forgot about that yeah it because i also it gave me whatever harry potter book where katie bell gets like cursed and like flies up in the air yeah um it's similar vibes to it's that. It's very too. gory. It's kind of like, ooh, yeah. freaky. But it's not happening in real life. It's just like in Freya's head, and she feels like her insides like becoming outside. <laughs> yeah. uh, please stay on the inside. Yeah. And then so when the like the the w- witch is so freaked out by how poorly this ritual is going <laughs> that she like cancels it and she runs out of the ritual circle, and Freya like wakes up and she's like got tattoos on both arms Mm -hmm. and one is one god and the other is apparently another god but they can't make it out because her arm is so scarred Mm -hmm. from the burns yeah i didn't realize that this was foreshadowing it's kind of i mean it's kind of dumb yeah yeah Yeah. okay thank you (laughs) yeah (laughs) because it it felt dumb when i connected the dots i was like oh that feels kind of like okay well they try to like smack you in the face with it with the prophecy bit about like oh like the shield maiden whose name is born in fire Born in fire over and over and over yeah. again. Like, okay. Got Obviously, it. there's like, she is not just the daughter of like Hiln? Hiln, yeah. Who's some like secondary god, but a god of like healing and protective. Yeah. Like, her, her stick is here's the shield. It'll blow people <laughs> yeah. back. You got it? Good. Yeah. So, like, that's what Freya thinks. What everyone thinks she's the shield maiden of is the daughter of Hiln. Hiln. Hil- Hiln. <laughs> I can't say any of these words. That's that's fair. Because it's like H-I-L-N, so mm-hmm. there's no like second vowel to, mm-hmm. you know, not fuck up your life. <laughs> yeah. And then they go into like the caravan convoy thing, mm-hmm. right? Because that's like a solid like 30%, 40% of this book is just like travel. Yeah. Which is such a like cop out for doing anything better. <laughs> well- yeah, they also use the like them convoying to the mountain to visit the top and make a sacrifice as like in this time they learn about Bjorn's backstory, which is he was kidnapped as a child by King Harold, mm-hmm. uh, which I will say author appeared to like follow some some historical narratives. It seemed like it. Yeah. That was nice. And yeah. like the Norse mythology seemed well researched. Mm-hmm. Okay. At least you did one thing, right? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you tried. Yeah. So we learned that he was kidnapped and held hostage for years and years and years by King Harold, who is like the overarching, mm-hmm. I don't know. He's like the big baddie across the street, mm-hmm. but he's on like a different island mm-hmm. than they are. 
And he like raids them continually. And he's the big baddie, basically. And then we also get to meet Leaf. Is that his name? That does feel right. I wanted to say Eric, but I'm just... (laughs) (laughs) He feels the same way, apparently. (laughs) But yeah, I think it is Leaf. He they is, just picked the most like it's dumb stereotypical. Yeah, like, okay, we have Freya and Leaf and Bjorn. Bjorn, <laughs> yeah, got them all. Uh, and Leaf is Bjorn's half brother, so the son of first wife and Snorri. And he's like fifteen, yeah, sixteen, like seemingly like a good dude, just mm-hmm. kind of young. And so everybody's kind of upset because he's been there the whole time, and they're like, "Oh, that should be your heir." And he's like. But Bjorn is my firstborn. I can't not have him be the heir. And it's like, I don't think that's really how that's that works. That's how that works. Because sure. he like just got back a couple years ago or something. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm, is no one kind of suspicious of this? <laughs> so there's a fuck ton of secondary characters that we get introduced to. Um, For no it, reason. It's hard to keep them all straight. Like there's a couple other secondary female characters that should have interesting backstories. Like the yeah. Like the prophet bard type yeah. woman. Yeah. What's her name? It's like Steninen or something yeah. weird. You're like rocking out these names. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm just going with my heart. <laughs> Your people are calling to you. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, like she should be a compelling character because basically her thing is she has a drop of blood from some kind of like storytelling goddess or whatever. Um, she's described as voluptuous and beautiful unnecessarily. But it is interesting because it kind of leads into her being like passed along and bought by all these like Jarls that want, you know, stories told because her magic power is like when she tells a story, like everybody Feels shares it. a vision of it. Mm-hmm. And so she's like very cold and standoffish and people are like, I don't want to tell you my stories because it's excruciating because like you feel what you felt during that moment when she's telling the story about it. And so it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really about that either. But so she should be a compelling figure, but like she does not get any kind of reasonable like character arc of anything. No, she's just there just to, you know, spread the lore about Freya and and be somewhat like of a questionable spy figure. Yeah. Like, can we trust her? And like, why are women the only like like Snorri is the ultimate villain? Yeah. But yet all of the women around Snorri are portrayed as like, if not. Yeah. Conniving. Yeah. Because the wife is portrayed that way, too, because for whatever reason, like, even though the wife was the reason that Freya didn't have to have sex with this old man, she's like, I fucking hate that bitch. And it's like, why? Like, it was so that was such a disservice to the wife as a character because she does nothing wrong by Freya. She helps her heal. She gets her dressed for the wedding. She makes sure she doesn't have to sleep with her gross old husband. And. Freya hates her for no other reason that she's apparently a beautiful woman that people like. Yeah. Because, yeah, because she's, like, well-liked by the village. Yeah. All of her decisions are informed because there's one point in a little bit where the village is under attack again and Snorri doesn't want to go defend them because they're like, we have a destiny to meet. And she's like, what the actual fuck? Like, these are our, like, family members. Like, we need to go save the village. Are you high? And Freya's like, she would, why does she want to protect the village? But, like, I want to protect the village and, like, we should do that. And it's like, but she's still mad at the wife for suggesting it when it's like, you had the same idea? Like, it's, what? It's unnecessary, like, feminine competition. Yeah. Which... Stop doing that. I don't think this book passes the, whatchamacallit? The, like, oh, the, yeah, the Berkdale test. The test or whatever. Because mm-hmm. all of the discussions eventually start talking about Bjorn or Snorri or mm-hmm. someone. Like, you don't have two female characters just, like, talking together except for, like, Towards the one end. paragraph. Yeah. yeah. Girl, this what? <laughs> this is a book. <laughs> Part of the appeal of like fantasy, romanticy, even romance in general is like having empowered heroines who are relatable and admirable. And this Freya is not. No. She makes dumb choices over and over and over again. And her only obsession is with Bjorn. Like yep. she doesn't even seem to care that she's got this mysterious prophecy that is not quite following what everyone tells her that it should be. Yeah. Have you guys ever had I'm talking like the readers are in the room with us, but um I wish for they were you. The <laughs> it strikes me as like those friends that you had or that one specific friend in like middle school and high school that was just like 
crazy boy crazy, Mm -hmm. not a girl's girl, would not even flinch to, like, leave you behind to go hang out with boys and, like, is seemingly, like, self-obsessed but, like, makes kind of haphazard attempts at friendship with you and you're like, oh, we are friends, I think. That's Freya. Mm -hmm. Like, just boy crazy, does not really care for other women but in, like, a self-centered way. Yeah. Because, like, we get... One of her, like, female friends dies. She takes it excessively hard, but, like, only to, like, show that she was impacted by someone else dying. Like, not necessarily the death itself, Mm -hmm. but, like, the impact it had on her. You are not a girl's girl. (laughs) No, and I feel like people like that are only, like, only have friendships to further their own ends. Yeah. And, like, if there's no use to the other person, like, they're not going to waste their time. Mm -hmm. And that's... Mm -hmm. Freya. That's what it feels like. Where even are we in the plot? And they go up to the like they go up to the mountain. Yeah. And okay, so we'll we'll stop. They've made it to the mountain. They were attacked on the road again. And at this point, Snorri is like, you know, you know what? Maybe you guys need to separate so we can like we'll go one way, we'll pretend you are still with us, and as a distraction, you guys continue up the mountain and you guys being Bjorn and Freya. Of course. Yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> because also he, oh, excuse me. Uh, he also tasked Bjorn with never leaving her side and being her protector. My e- man, no. <laughs> do you not see them like lusting after like, each other? Like you can other? sense attraction <laughs> between two people. Like it's very visible if it's dumb. As constant as this. But yeah. also like, didn't you hear your wife when she's like someone of your blood, mm-hmm. not you? And that's your son that you're sending Apparently all with? the characters are dumb. <laughs> It's like my man's. Yeah. <laughs> what? So they send them on this like really sketchy side of the mountain that they have to go through like a cave zombie. of wonders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A zombie infested stairway to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically where they're going. Yeah. So so we'll start stop at the like uh, Mines of Moria apparently is where we're ending. That's fair. Yeah. And uh, the what? Lord of the Rings. Sure. Have you seen Lord of the Rings? I have. I didn't know that's what they were called, though. We're talking about the, like, you shall not pass. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. We're on the same page. Okay. From our shelf to yours. (laughs) We'll see you on the next page. This book is trash. (laughs) Oh, my God. Why? Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'.